Hey there guys, how you doing today? So, I've covered Nintendo plenty this E3, but apart from some gamers' brief jokes, I haven't talked much about the other guys. Uh, despite what some people think, I do indeed follow the non-Nintendo companies, and believe it or not, even play some of their games. The problem is that very few of you seem to care. But you know what? I'm still gonna talk about them from time to time, and this is one of those times. Let's go over each press conference and I'll tell you what I thought. And uh, a disclaimer, I haven't been following most of these games like very closely, so in a lot of cases this stuff was revealed before E3 and I just didn't catch up on it until the show. So go easy on me if I sound a little ignorant. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get EA out of the way first, as this one is always my least favorite. Uh, they just tend to deliver more of the types of games that I'm not into, and also they're the most, uh, let's just say, corporate. Sports take up so much time, and as you could probably guess, I would rather eat a bowl of rocks than play a realistic sports game. Though I will say that putting a whole story thing into a football game is pretty cool, so uh, long shot was at least something to mix things up. They showed off some DLC for Battlefield 1, and out of all the shooters out there at the moment, I've gotta say this one looks the most interesting. Uh, I've always been pretty impressed with the trailers and stuff. Uh, it just looks really hectic and complex, and there are all these different vehicles and stuff. Uh, I don't know, I guess it just looks really cool. I know I'll never actually play it, but I'm never bored when EA is showing it off, and that's not exactly something I can say about every other shooter. The only game that really stood out to me in EA's showing was A Way Out. It's being created by the same guy that did Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which I absolutely adored. I was a little bummed that his next project was something so dramatically different on an artistic level, but it still does look like an interesting game in its own right. Uh, in this world of online multiplayer, this guy crafted a game that's meant to be played with a friend right next to you. Together you play out this story about two dudes trying to escape from prison, and you can work together in all these interesting ways, and one guy's in a cutscene where one guy's walking around, and I don't know, I, I really suggest giving the game a look, it looks pretty cool. After that, the rest of the show was really just Star Wars Battlefront 2, not to be confused with Star Wars Battlefront 2. And uh, I already poked plenty of fun at it in the gamer's brief, but it really was silly just how proud they were acting <laughs> about putting a story mode in. They just made such a big deal out of it. Like they were blessing us with this miracle feature that, you know, should have just been in the last game and was in the old Battlefront 2. But hey, whatever, uh, the game does look really cool now that it's, you know, complete. <laughs> I actually played a good amount of the original games back in the day and they were a lot of fun. So the closer these games can get to living up, the better. So next up was Xbox, and I really can't stress enough how bad the name Xbox One X is. I really can't. Um, funny story, I was watching with my buddy Brian, and we were joking about what the name might be, because we knew it would be bad. Because it's always bad. He legit said Xbox One X as a joke, and we laughed, because that would be too funny. Because that was too terrible of a name. And yeah, when they revealed it, we lost it. It was amazing. <laughs> Uh, the console itself is nothing super interesting, it's basically a little more powerful than a PS4 Pro and a little more expensive. Uh, it would be more important if it looked like Microsoft was doing that whole cross-generation thing I was talking about before, or really otherwise selling everyone on their brand, but they're really not. Uh, there were very few big exclusives shown in the rest of the show, though that didn't stop them from throwing the word exclusive around like it was confetti. It was all timed exclusive and launch exclusive and console launch exclusive. Uh, I get what they were doing, but frankly, it was sad. It felt really desperate coming from such a big company. It's really just like, hey everyone, we really, really hope that playing multi-platform games with a little more power is more important than playing Sony's plethora of big exclusives. Like, like really bad, we hope that so much. But anyway, like I said, there was nothing huge at the show, but certainly some highlights. Uh, the trailer for the new Metro game was fun. Those games are very interesting visually. Fighting a big mutant bear? Always a plus for any trailer. Like I said in my other video, I always like seeing the new Assassin's Creed games, and it was interesting to learn that this is the origin story for the Assassin Brotherhood. I saw the eagle thing and I was like, oh, just like Far Cry Primal. Okay, that moment I said was the best one in the gamer's brief where the guy pops up and runs up to the dude and hits him with a frying pan. We just about died laughing. <laughs> Something about it was so unexpected. Um, State of Decay 2 came up next and I've never looked into the first one at all and I really honestly had no idea what it was at all. Uh, but this trailer looked really interesting. Uh, actually setting up strongholds and growing food and stuff, that's awesome. It's the side of surviving a zombie apocalypse that you don't usually see. So I'm definitely looking into this game more. Uh, it was one of the few I might actually buy that of this year. Dragon Ball Z, it's cool to see that they have 100% perfected cell shading and in still images, I straight up can't tell that it's not a cartoon frame. 
The Last Night. Wowza! I couldn't tell you what the game actually is, but that art style is just stunning. Super Lucky's Tale was uh, interesting. I like that companies are experimenting with 3D platformers again, but man, this game is so cutesy. <laughs> uh, obviously, as a Nintendo fan, I'm not gonna avoid a game just because it's colorful, but this one is like a preschool show in game form, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just, uh, I think I just didn't expect to see something like it at an Xbox conference. It was really, really interesting to see Crackdown. Uh, I haven't been following the series, so I assumed that after such a long time without hearing about the new game, it was probably canned. I mean, Xbox, they've been canceling games left and right. I even told myself that if it didn't show up this year, it'd be done for sure. That would be it. But hey, there it was. What do you know? After that, it was definitely cool seeing a new Ori in the Blind Forest and a new Life is Strange. I haven't played the originals, but I know a lot of people were big fans, and man, they always looked really interesting. Okay, so bringing OG Xbox backwards compatibility was weird. I mean, really awesome, obviously, but just really surprising. Uh, selling old games digitally, even for a couple bucks each, can net a company a good amount of money. So I'm baffled that they would basically cut out some of their profit potential. It's a pro-consumer move, the likes of which we just don't see very often from any company, and I applaud them for that. They're working pretty hard to build up some, some goodwill. Lastly, they showed off Bioware's new IP, Anthem. Uh, what we saw was certainly gorgeous. The graphics were amazing. The whole walled off city surrounded by jungle thing is cool. The guy's zipping around everywhere. That was neat. I think I need to learn more about the game before I can decide if I'm interested though. Uh, I'm never into just playing, going around shooting guys. So I need to know what happens in between the shooting. Can we expect RPG elements and a great story and open dialogue and all that good stuff we uh, at least used to be able to expect from a Bioware game? Also, while we're on the subject, say hello to the game that sucked all the development talent away from Mass Effect Andromeda. Thanks, EA. Hope it ends up being worth it. Man, have you noticed I'm a lot snarkier when I'm not covering Nintendo? <laughs> Let's see, next we had Bethesda, and they had a pretty strong showing. The presentation was speedy and had this fun little Bethesda land theme. I think VR is pretty cool, so playing Doom in VR sounds like it would be really intense. Uh, I kind of don't even know how it would work. You move so fast in that game, I feel like I'd sprain my neck after about 30 seconds. Skyrim in VR is also cool, though I, I think a lot of us are getting a little tired of Skyrim by now. Special Edition, VR, and Switch are a lot of different additions to come out within one year. Do you want shinier graphics? Do you want to play in VR? Or do you want it on the go? Take your pick. I couldn't help but notice the Switch version was not the enhanced version, which doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, the Switch isn't much more powerful than Gen 7 consoles, and Skyrim Special Edition was a remastering for Gen 8 consoles. Uh, the motion controlled fighting is a little bit fun. I wouldn't use it, but um, I, I guess some people might like it. It's kind of cute. Announcing Creation Club was interesting. People got pretty mad when they created a storefront where people could sell their mods, so they ditched the idea. Now we've got a thing where Bethesda makes their own mods and sells them. And you know, I can't even tell you that's a bad thing. Uh, players can still make their own mods and upload them and everyone can get them for free and all that. This is Bethesda being like, dude, we're missing out here. Why can't we do this too and make some money? And of course, if people aren't interested, they don't have to buy the stuff. It's just another form of DLC. The thing that I personally find icky about it is the whole credits thing we see in the trailer. Any system that doesn't use straight money feels shady, like it's trying to trick you into spending more. But hey, there could be other ways to gain credits, so I don't really know yet. Uh, but it was definitely surprising that they would go this route after last time. It's definitely a thing to think about and, you know, see how it turns out. I basically watched the entire Evil Within 2 trailer before I knew what it was. <laughs> the first one has been on my 2 playlist for a long time now, and this is the sort of stuff I'm really into. This trailer was super weird and super interesting. Then Wolfenstein was a fun one. There's another series I'll probably never play, but it was a heck of a trailer, and there's a lot about the game that looks really cool. Ubisoft is always a fun one. It felt pretty weird not having Aisha hosting. Uh, I, I kind of thought she was a permanent fixture by now. People seem to be pretty divided on her, but you know what? I think she's fun. I like her. And especially now that I'm used to seeing her there every single year, I can say I missed her a bit. I was really surprised that they showed so much of the Mario and Rabbids game rather than just showing a teaser and letting Nintendo take the rest. Uh, they showed off the game quite extensively. And like I said before, it does look promising. I'm actually really looking forward to giving it a try. The crew too put a nice little twist on racing sims by including all sorts of motorsports, and that made it a little more fun to watch. Uh, it's actually quite impressive that they can cram so many different events into one game, whereas most games are just like, 
Here's cars, you race cars, the end. The only problem was that the trailer they showed was way too long. It just never ended and it never switched up. It was just cars and planes and jet skis racing each other forever, just going and going and going. It could have been half as long. Skull and Bones, that was an awesome surprise. Ever since playing Assassin's Creed 4, I've been like, this is the best pirate game ever and Ubisoft needs to just plain make pirate games without the Assassin stuff. And look at this, they totally did. Uh, now I'm trying to not get too excited until we know more. It's not gonna be the same without a good amount of the game taking place on land to help break up all the sailing. You need sword fighting and all that stuff and it needs to have a cool story and characters and all that. But really what it comes down to is we just don't know how much of a single player component there will be. The whole presentation focused on online play and they mentioned going quote solo or with friends but that could have just meant online without any friends, still fighting other people online. We really don't even know if there will be a story and all that, or if this is really just a game where you fight guys online with ships. It kind of looks that way, even the follow-up stuff they've said. It's just the only footage we ever see is guys on ships fighting. They're not even boarding each other. It's just kablam, kabloom, I'm fighting you with my ship. If there's a robust single player experience though with a huge world to explore and conquer like in Black Flag, then I am on this game like stink on a monkey. Especially with that bit at the end, where they teased a giant squid. Oh man, since they're breaking away from Assassin's Creed, they're breaking away from our own more realistic world, and if that means sea monsters, then yes please. As an aside, it's pretty funny that two companies happen to be developing online co-op pirate games at the same time, right? Is it just me? So Starlink came out of nowhere. Like, what is this? It's certainly a new take on the whole Toys to Life thing, and you know what? It looks pretty sick. Uh, none of it will be worth anything if the gameplay isn't fun, but just the idea of customizing your little toy ship and having it pop up in the game, that is awesome! I couldn't tell you if it's an idea that will make any money, especially since Toys to Life kind of seems to be in its twilight years, and in fact I've got pretty heavy doubts, but I'll be keeping my eye on this one for sure. And wishing beyond wishing that I was 12 again. Oh man. The Far Cry 5 trailer was cool. Uh, when I heard about the concept and the setting and all that, I had a hard time imagining how it would work, but seeing it in action made a weird amount of sense. I think I mentioned before that I've only played Far Cry Primal, but I really enjoyed it. And while I didn't necessarily plan on playing any other ones, 5 caught my eye, uh, more so than I expected at least. Okay, so when I said that no other publisher had any reveals that came close to the hugeness of Metroid Prime 4, that wasn't strictly true. I was forgetting, of course, about Beyond Good and Evil 2. I won't say it's as big, because we've known it's coming for real Z for a few years now, and it's always been something of a cult favorite, but it was close to as big, and man, it is finally happening. The only bummer about the reveal was that the audio on the audience was cut during the trailer so we couldn't hear their reaction when the pig guy showed up because that was when we all knew what we were looking at. Uh, it's really cool to see Ubisoft going after the game this hard instead of just making it a little smaller budget, almost indie feel kind of game. And we have to just keep our fingers crossed that development is far enough along that we can get some gameplay without waiting for next year, although we really probably will have to wait till next year for anything more. The only other thing to say about Ubisoft's conference is that this must have been the first year that the E3 guys allowed presenters to use the F word because Ubi used it quite liberally and deliberately. It was just kind of funny. So last but not least, we've got Sony. Sony had a very interesting show this year. Not a single person took the stage except President Sean Layden, uh, which is great because he happens to be my favorite Sony guy. Uh, I don't know why, just, just seems like a nice guy. One of the few big wig execs I, I feel like I can trust. Maybe it's the beard. Anyway, and he only came on a few times and even the first time was only after the show had been going for like 16 minutes. The whole presentation was just game after game after game. Nothing but trailers the whole time. And it was phenomenal. It was pretty fancy too. There were pyrotechnics and they used a sound a lot between trailers to set the mood. It was a very sensory experience. There weren't a bunch of huge reveals or anything, but the showing was still solid. It was fun to finally see some real footage for the next Uncharted after the teaser last year. The Horizon DLC looks pretty dang cool. It feels a little too early for DLC, but that's just where the industry's at, I guess. And man, the snowy tundra with the big old monster or whatever on the mountain? Man, makes me wanna wait for the Game of the Year edition or something before picking it up. You might remember from my pre-show that I wasn't too into Days Gone based on the first trailer, but then I became more interested after reading more about it. Well, after this latest trailer, I am back to not being interested. 
There's just nothing this game is doing that hasn't been done a million times before in a million other games. The meat of the gameplay demo was just the same old stealth that's been done to death, lure the guy over into the bushes and kill him. Then once the floodgates were busted open, it was the same run and gun from the first trailer. It feels more than ever that shooting preposterous amounts of zombies really is this game's only gimmick. There's nothing else about it that looks good to me. Uh, I think it's because for me, the real draw of a zombie apocalypse is that there are lots of zombies to kill and limited resources, so you gotta be smart and skillful and know when to fight or when to run. This game has none of that. It might be an open world and all that, but right now it just looks like a dumb action game. This guy's basically a war machine. I still can't make the final call until I see more, but it's not looking good. It looks like a high quality game and all that, but just not for me. Though on the plus side, our mutant bear count for this E3 just hit two, <laughs> so that's a thing. Shadow of the Colossus was certainly a surprise. Uh, I can see why people might find it kind of superfluous because of the HD collection on PS3, but I see this as a good thing for multiple reasons. First, and I didn't find out about this until I actually played it for myself, but Shadow of the Colossus HD is messed up. There's something wrong with the gripping system, which makes climbing way harder than it should be. You lose your footing at every little shake of the Colossus. I didn't know what was wrong until I looked it up, and yes, it's a very real problem that I haven't really seen addressed a lot. It makes the game way less fun, and some of the time trials are basically impossible. For that reason, a new version with a fix would be very welcome. Also, I only had my PS3 very briefly, and I don't particularly feel like keeping it around, so having the game on my PS4 will be great. I'm not generally a big double dipper, but this game is a special case. It is one of my all-time favorite games. It holds a very special place in my heart. And you know what? I can't wait to play it with those fancy new graphics. It looks amazing. Plus, the more people buying it means that more kind of artsy games like this have more of a place in the industry, and hey, that's a big plus. I don't usually have much to say about Call of Duty, but was that trailer for the new game really underwhelming to anyone else? It's like they took the feedback that the games were getting too futuristic or something and saw that EA was doing a World War I game, so they decided they'd throw back as well. But there's nothing to set it apart. It just looked like another old-fashioned shooter. Pretty tame for such a huge series, you know what I mean? But I'll admit that I know next to nothing about the game or the series, so hey, maybe it'll be great. Maybe everyone else is looking at this trailer and being like, yes, this game looks amazing. Going into the show, I was really curious to see if Sony would continue to support VR or just be like, cool, thanks for the money, we're out of here. But there was a good number of VR titles on display. Uh, more than ever, I want to play some of this stuff. But at the current price point, of course, I'm not going to be making the plunge anytime soon. Let's see, God of War looked pretty great, lots of cool monsters. Uh, like, like really, really cool monsters, and those graphics are incredible. I played through most of the first game back in the day, and I just never really got into it, but now I'm more tempted than ever to dip back in. Not sure if I will, but it's a possibility, which is more than I can say for any of the other previous games. My man, Detroit Become Human, looking as awesome as ever. I didn't really go into this much in my pre-E3 video, but I just love games with a lot of choices. I, I love affecting the story, and I love moral dilemmas. Mass Effect, Walking Dead, that kind of stuff. So this game, naturally, I'm still very, very into it. It was cool how last year we got to see the investigator guy, and this time we got to see the whole android uprising thing. It's cool to see how the scope of the game is so big. Only problem? This is its second E3 and it's not even releasing this year. TBD 2018 is all we get, which will most likely mean late 2018 at the earliest. Ah, stop getting me hooked with trailers and making me wait like a million years. Lastly was Spider-Man, and yeah, it looked okay. Uh, just like everyone else in the world, I was slightly irked by the rather high number of QTEs. Uh, the gameplay looked pretty cool though, and I'm really surprised it's been so long since the last good Spider-Man game. That web slinging looks as fun as ever, and if they can nail that, I'm pretty sure that's just a selling point all by itself. I will say, it was a little weird ending the show on it. Uh, just doesn't seem like that important of a game. Uh, at least not the sort you'd end your super classy E3 show on. But hey, we'll see. If it can reach the heights of 2004 Spider-Man 2, it will be a pretty big deal after all. So those were the shows. Closing thoughts? Well, I think E3 has been getting better and better every year for the last few years. Uh, the amount of demos and trailers and interesting content is up, and the amount of boredom and blathering is down. This year had a ton of very solid presentations, and the only guys who haven't seemed to have gotten the memo are the guys at EA. Still not as bad as previous years, but EA's show was the only one that still had dudes who looked like Disney villains spouting endless buzzwords at the audience, and YouTube celebrities trying and failing horrendously to make the show more hip or whatever they think we call it now. They were the only ones who brought the sort of discomfort and awkwardness E3 is known for. And, and hey, you know what? 
Maybe we should be applauding them for that, for, uh, for keeping up the tradition, for sticking to their roots. Go EA, go you. When factoring both presentation and content, I do believe Nintendo had the strongest showing this year. Ubisoft probably comes in second as far as reveals go. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 was the second of what were probably this year's only two mega huge announcements, and they had Rabbids and Skull and Bones and Starlink and Far Cry 5 to help out. Strictly presentation-wise though, Sony had it hands down. Nintendo was only slightly weaker in this category because they held back just a little bit too much from the spotlight so they could show it during the Treehouse stream. But Sony was just like, here's a bunch of games, almost no chit chat. And it was perfect. I mean, I don't think you could possibly ask for a better E3 presentation. It was everything we care about and only what we care about. Quite possibly the first E3 show to ever be purely perfect. Here it is folks, E3 2017 Sony press conference, a historical moment for the event. Here's hoping they stick to the format from here on out. Oof, that was a ton of stuff to cover. And you know, I'm sad that E3 is over, but I had a ton of fun and I hope you all did too. And assuming this video gets more than like five views, I'll see you next year with more of the other guys. See you later.